everybody, it's me, your buddy Dave from the darkstuff.com and the Dark Stuff channel here on YouTube. I just wanted to come on and just talk about how Slayer dropped this massive bomb of an announcement today that not only are they unretired, but they got two festival appearances in 2024. Does this mean that Slayer is back? Yeah, so look, in honor of the event, I put on my old Slayer hoodie. Now, this thing is from uh, from the last time I saw Slayer, July 7th, 2015. And uh, I remember that, and I remember this sweatshirt, because, first of all, this thing is when, from when I was really fat, okay? It's a triple XL. And I, I like to tell people back then that I bought it a little big so that it could shrink down. It didn't need to shrink, really, okay? Now... Don't mistake this as fat shaming. If you're large and in charge and you're happy with that, go for it. I'm, I'm totally fine with you. But for me, I was not. I was super depressed. I was very unhappy. I, I, my health was terrible. And from that period of time, I still have lingering health problems eight or nine years later. But that's not why we're here. We're not here to talk about my health problems. Okay, We're here to talk about Slayer getting back together. What this means and are these... There are there other ramifications in the music business? Just first of all, look at that. The band is live undead. They're back. Okay? So the announcement came out today, uh, seemingly out of nowhere, because nobody I knew uh, had been hearing even any rumors about this. Slayer, who announced their farewell shows, their final world tour, it even said on their website, Slayer.net, in 2019, are coming back for some shows in 2024. They're going to do Riot Fest in Chicago, which takes place in September. Uh, September 20th to the 22nd. And they're also going to do something called the Louder Than Life Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. And they're playing on September 27th. Of course, the inevitable next question is, Dave, are you going to be going to any of these shows? Probably not, no. I'm just going to be honest with you, right? I mean, I've seen Slayer probably six or seven times throughout their career. Not a world record, okay? But enough to know that I do fucking like them a lot. But my giant festival days are behind me okay i just don't want to do it anymore it's just not my scene i mean you want to give me some laminate vip treatment i'd consider flying into louisville or chicago for that but we but whatever that since that's likely like a zero percent chance of that happening um i'm pretty safe to say that i'm not going to go but it brings up an important question or needs i don't know important i mean but it's a significant question when this is like the third fourth fifth i don't know hundredth band who says they're going to do a farewell and then they just return a few years later i mean notoriously well kiss did it they did a farewell tour in in 2000 in the year 2000 they took a few months off and then they inevitably came right back and uh it was just a farewell to two of the members of the band motley Crue had an infamous we're we're over we even signed contracts saying we'll never play again you know and then of course they've been back they did a stadium tour and now they're they're back doing the state fair circuit this year they're playing at that louder than life festival so and now slayer when they announced their retirement in 2019 i felt like it was pretty clear that carrie king was not 100 percent behind it like he felt like he could keep going but there are only two principles in Slayer, two guys that, that can make any sort of decision, and that's Kerry King and Tom Mariah. And if Kerry King wants to do it, but Tom doesn't, okay, so then Slayer ended in 2019. And we've been waiting around. Now, granted, there was a pandemic involved, but basically Kerry King and the rest of any Slayer members have been completely silent. And then out of nowhere a few months ago, or a month and a half ago or so, Kerry King announces... His debut solo album puts out the first song, announces a release date. He's doing some touring, and then this happens. I mean, as to whether this Slayer 
mini tour or reunion, slight reunion, whatever, helps or hurts his solo career. I think that remains to be determined. I mean, on the one hand, Slayer's going to get a lot more attention, and therefore his album might get a lot more attention. But on the other hand, it might actually distract from that because anytime he goes to talk about the new album, they're going to ask him about Slayer. What's next? Are they going to do more shows? Are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? So... I, I could see it kind of going both ways on that one. So this brings up the inevitable question. Do bands do this on purpose? Do they just announce, I'm quitting, a, a, knowing full well that in a couple of years they're going to get back together? I mean, is this sort of a routine? Or do they legitimately think, I'm done, and I am legitimately retired, but something brings me back, i.e. dollar signs, okay? Um and at the same time, while people are like celebrating these these old bands, and I'm not including Slayer in this, but I'm more saying like Motley Crue and Kiss and whatever, of staying on the road and staying on tour and, oh, we're coming back again because the fans demand it or whatever, while simultaneously complaining about extreme ticket prices, do you know why the ticket prices are so high? It's because you keep having to pay the same old artists more and more and more and more money for them to continue to do it. Okay, I don't think Slayer needed the money. I think they were thrown so much cash to do this Riot Fest and this Louder Than Life that it was almost like, we can't turn this down. But my question still remains. I mean, it, it, when a band says they're going away, is, that, is there any reason to believe them? And when they charge a premium on those tickets, is, that, is it worth paying? I mean, then when they come back a few years later, do you, do you deserve something in exchange for them lying to you? Is it lying? I don't know. Again, I'm trying not to include Slayer in this specific thing, even though my video is about Slayer and Slayer's on the thumbnail and Slayer's the reason that prompted this me making this video, but it just kind of bugs a little bit. Like, I don't get it. Like, why... I'm happy that Slayer's back. I don't think, like I said, I don't think they should have ever stopped in the first place, but they did. And they announced they're doing a final world tour. And they got a lot of people to shell out a lot of money to go see Slayer one final time. And now you're telling me five years later, we were just kidding. Same with Motley Crue. And same with, same with Kiss, frankly. Okay? And same with all of these other bands. And it's not just in the heavy metal world. Okay? Why are the Pixies still going? Because someone keeps shoveling them a ton of money. And then it makes it so that other bands can't ascend and they're... Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's a whole endless cycle. And the reason why newer rock bands can't ascend up the chain is because these bands are clustering that chain, that ladder, whatever the metaphor I'm trying to come up with. And so nobody else can get above it. I mean, the fucking Rolling Stones are in their 80s and they're still going. Get off the stage, guys. Jesus. I gave a positive review to the last Stones album. I love the Stones. I do not want to see them. They were too old in the 90s when I saw them. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I mean, okay, fucking Slayer. I'm glad that they're, that they're doing it to a certain degree. But I do have mixed feelings. Because when a band says they're going to do their final tour, it should be the final tour. That should mean something. Anyways, I'm going to get off right here. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. So, uh, you have a MySpace page or something?